I have a crooked baby elephant. Her name is Guts. She's named after Haggis. So I'm sorry there wasn't a video yesterday. It was a really, really horrible day and I just did not have time to do it. But there was a video today. So, um, I have a lot of things that I want to talk about with Casual Vacancy, but I'm not really sure how to talk about them without spoilers. So I thought what I'd do in this video, since I really liked it, I pretty much agree with pretty much everything Kalinda said, except I did actually like a few of the characters, especially Sakinda and uh, Crystal. I don't want to just repeat what she said, so I thought I'd respond to Dan's video. Now, Dan. You're wrong. I'm not going to say a... It's literature, it's out there on rules because I don't really feel it's necessary because you already know I'm going to say that, so why bother? I do agree that it is better to show rather than to tell. However, I disagree with basically everything else you said in that video. Overall, The Casual Vacancy, having read it, it's a really very highly character-driven book and even if you don't like the characters, you have to accept them as people and as human beings. And you have to actually take an interest in their characterization, even if you can't take an interest in them as a person. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good book. It was says a lot of really interesting things about society and social stratification. And I think you're kind of missing out on a lot if you decide to be pretentious and just say, well, I'm a better writer than J.K. Rowling. This is terrible. Why should I bother? Um, I know you're actually going to finish it, so hopefully your opinion will change, or has changed by now, because it's Sunday night and your video's due tomorrow, so I hope you finished it by now. I did really want to respond to one specific thing that Dan said, though, and that is this. There are people out there that are going to go, who are you, to criticize Queen Rowling, and I if I was on the other side of the screen, I would probably agree with you, but I'm not. I won't. Now this is one thing I actually don't disagree with Dan on, although he's not really stating an opinion in this clip, so <laughs> there's that. I know there are a lot of people who kind of have the attitude that you can't criticize J.K. Rowling, and they have this attitude about uh, Stephen Moffat, which I criticize Stephen Moffat all the time, so I run into it a lot. Um, Culturally, as a broad thing, we have this opinion about the Beatles. I did a whole video about that. That was my very first video for Book Fighters 2.0. It was basically about that. So go back and watch that if you haven't already, because I'm going to reference that. It's just this whole idea that the culture has that some things are so sacred they cannot be criticized, and I disagree with that vehemently. I don't believe anything is so sacred that it's above criticism, particularly things created by humans, because humans are imperfect, therefore the things we create are imperfect, therefore they are all worthy of criticism, and you can criticize something and like it. This is case of point for me is Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who. I hate Stephen Moffat horribly. I hate him as a showrunner. I can't stand his writing style. I liked his That being said, I absolutely love Doctor Who, and if I didn't love Doctor Who, it wouldn't be a problem that Stephen Moffat's writing is possible. So, I can see where you're coming from, Dan. But, I disagree with your reading of the book, and I hope that once you've actually read the book, you will be able to understand what's going on in the book. This book is not about the writing. This book is about what the writing is saying and yeah you would probably say that well you need to have good writing too and I agree I don't have a problem with the writing maybe it's not writing you like that's just up to you it has nothing to do with it but I don't think it's so much that it's a terrible book the other thing I disagree with is what you said about dialogue I feel like the dialogue in this book is very naturalistic it not all dialogue needs to be zingy and Let's just say, not everything needs to be a John Green novel, because his dialogue is very, very 
it, it's good dialogue. It's really good dialogue. It's really interesting dialogue, but it's not realistic because teenagers don't actually talk like that. The teenagers in John Green novels talk the way that we want to talk, but we don't talk like that. No one talks like that in reality. And I'm going to do a video sometime in this project on the casual vacancy and sociolinguistics, so I'll get to this more then. But I really liked that the dialogue in this book was so naturalistic, that it was so ordinary and everyday, because that's kind of the point. These are terrible, terrible people who do horrible things to each other and to themselves, but they are completely everyday. They are not villains. They are not Voldemort. They are your neighbors. They are, more importantly, you. That's the point of this book. The villains aren't villains. They're not bad guys. They don't wear black hats. They're ordinary, everyday people dealing with ordinary, everyday life. And that's the point of this. And I think the dialogue reflects that. The way it's written reflects that. And hopefully once you've actually read the book, you'll be able to understand that. Um, yes. I'm gonna go. Guts is gonna go. Bye. Dan, I will see you tomorrow. And actually will this time, because normally I say, Dan, I will see you tomorrow, but I'm recording on a Saturday, and that's not true. But this time, Dan, I will see you tomorrow. Also, how can you criticize the casual vacancy for having too much exposition when you love Moby Dick so much?